Hey folks, and welcome to Tully River Quail. There comes a time in every man's life when we have to fight some battles, pick our wars. Sometimes we're called into them, sometimes we seek them out. But if you're a quail farmer, we all have a battle. It's them mouses. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about some Tully River Quail solutions that we use to keep our mouse population down at a minimum. Um, the supplier of U.S. Quail's feed system, so we have a feed loft, and we need to keep the mices and mouses and rats, which we have none of, hopefully, um, out of that. So I'm going to show you some of the systems that we use here, and maybe you want to or want to consider using these if you need to take care of some mice situations that you have outside, inside, in your quail barn um, in your flight pen and uh, we'll see how that goes first I want to have you say hi to ying and yang see a couple bob whites that have some bad feet that we've been kind of just keeping up here close to us as some shop buddies all right so everybody knows the, the mouse trap and this is a better mouse trap as they say they build a better mouse trap um, you can throw these around your facility if you like. You can keep them outside. Um, these are nice. They have a little well for peanut butter. So we like to put some chunky peanut butter in there. Sometimes the chunky peanut butter is too chunky to spread. So we mix a little bit of regular peanut butter. Smear that up on the top part. And that way we have a little bit of smoothing stuff and we also have some chunky stuff um, it doesn't have to be jiff obviously so you put a little chunky chunks in the middle in the well and smear a little of the smooth stuff on the outside this one needs to be cleaned and these work well you can get a, a dozen of these on the u.s quail shop or on amazon the problem is is sometimes this little latch that holds the mechanism up doesn't catch so this guy will release I can't do it with one hand but like that so let me just show you about resetting it alright now it's not working there you go so when you reset it that should lock that little mechanism and often it does but sometimes you get a Japanese or a Chinese product that doesn't work properly the plastics not set up so that one catch um, I'd say out of the 12 we got nine of them work so anyway that's the old-fashioned way but after traps can't keep up with stuff if you're starting to see that you have hordes of them underneath your outdoor coop or something that you just want to get rid of you have to start thinking about using um, bait, right? Um, so we have these two that we use. We like this uh, Tomcat peanut butter flavored bait chunks. And that's good because you can break up these blocks and you can actually put some of that down the holes. Now, one of the things you want to consider is when you are inside a place where birds may get out into you obviously don't want blocks of peanut butter tasting poison laying around so if you're going to put some chunks down the hole um, you want to make sure that they stay down there so this stuff over here this just one bite stuff you need to be super careful with this this does not play well there's no antidote for it it's super effective, super efficient, just one bite. This stuff, some people say that they, they actually feed their mice this and they get fat. So who knows? Um, if you're going to use it in holes around areas where there's animals, this is less expensive. This is more expensive. This is 23 bucks. This is 50 something. So you can break this up into little chunks. But <clears throat> I'll show you a little bit later here that uh, we use a special outdoor... Um, dispenser and having these little chunks with the holes in it 
is a way to load them and keep them so you're not having to check this and change it all the time. So how we place these is we save our berry containers. I cut a little mouse slot on one side, little mouse slot on the other side, and then I'll put a little board on top to weight it and they'll go in and eat. Sometimes I'll put some sand or something on the floor in here, but it has a little rim around the side that has some holes in it. I don't know if you can see that. There's some holes in the bottom. So any water that gets in here will stay off the elevated platform. And like I said, with one hole on either side, these are good to have inside your barn or around uh, an area where you have other pets or dogs or you know you don't want your birds if you have one get out you don't want him to go around eating your food your poison so anyway like you see i just have a little hole cut on either side i marked it and cut it with some scissors i used a little bit of tape to tape the lid from this ocean spray one together and like i said we'll put these around inside the shop and outside too um and just put one brick in there and then we can see with the clear plastic that that's loaded or not but let me show you these new things that we're using um, you can see i have one down there but these have a little screw each one of them comes with a key you can buy a set of one i guess that's just a one not a set but we have six here um, let me just back up a little bit so what happens is you take, each one of them comes with like this little Allen key screw. This just twists off. Oh, here's one here. This just twists off and then you just rack through the hole and that suspends it off the ground. You put this on and twist it and then tighten the key to lock it. And there's a little baffle on one side on the other side and then they give you little pins to put this down so you can attach it to the floor but the cool thing about this is you can attach these to a railing you can attach them like that with some zip ties on the top of a fence line um, anywhere that you want to put this you can affix it and, and tie it down so that it's uh any raceway that you can find, that's a good place. They come with stickers that you can put on there that puts dates on there when you place the sticker. Um, but, you know, that's what we do. We load it up and then what we do is we use this to put down the holes and we check it and we cover the hole with a block of wood, but up a little bit so that the mice can get in but any bird that escapes a cage won't be able to get in or any squirrel won't be able to get in things like that and the same thing with these like i said we put a little block of wood in there so it doesn't get taken away and spread around the area um, when you're using these baits you want to have gloves right if you have disposable gloves that's great i would suggest even washing your hands with the gloves on after you've touched this bait so that you're not throwing contaminated bait away. Um, the other thing you can use if you don't have some gloves are these doggy bags. A lot of, you know, we, most of us have dogs. A lot of us have dogs. Just put these on your hand when you pick up the bait and then pop it on the tube. These are less expensive than if you were to make it out of PVC, at least today, yourself. So if you were to buy this cap by Union, um, it would be rounded. It wouldn't be flat on the bottom. It wouldn't have these holes on the bottom so that the water doesn't get water doesn't collect in there. Wouldn't have the baffles. So again, you just want to protect it. So any birds you have aren't being able to get inside there. And that's the goal. So let me just show you what it looks like when you start to get some mice in your pen so give me a second here so here's our flight pen or not our flight pen but our uh, breeder cages and hey birds but we have some oh 
holes under there. There's a couple holes here. So I put some of the crushed up pellets that I made out of the chunks down there. Um, I put some inside that tube, the extension for the downspout. And then I also have this mechanism, which I should probably talk to you about. So with the droppings and everything, it's hard to, to keep this clean enough to not have mice. You can also see we have disposable poison baits uh, down there. But this is pretty wild. Uh, a mouse will walk over here and then they'll go and then they'll whoop fall in and you have some water down at the bottom and they die so let me just show you one other thing before i leave you once so this is our bob white flight pen and we've just started getting some mouses down here but i just want to show you the amount of stuff they do I mean, they're digging up some big condominiums here. Almost looks like a Pueblo in Taos. So we put some medicine down there. But again, we don't want to have bait laying around here. So we put the Tomcat stuff down the holes. You can see there's maybe some on the inside there still. There's a little bit there, the green. So, hey guys, another little condo here. So we put some of the Tomcat stuff in here and then I'm gonna bring those traps down with the one bite and I'll have a trap or two down here and that should take care of the mices. And then after I get these guys stopped, I'll just move those mouse tubes around the house so that uh, come winter when the mice want to come inside they will not be around <laughs> it's funny the only thing i can grow is ghost peppers cherry tomatoes super hot other peppers and moringa trees I take off the leaves of the moringa trees and put it in for treats with the birds because they're super healthy. Um, you should learn about moringa. M-O-R-I-N-G-A. Uh, we also planted some white raspberries or white uh, berry trees. The hell kind are they? I forget. Anyway, mulberries. So we have one here, we will have one over there. So these will grow big enough that they'll actually drop berries into the flight pen. So that's the plan. All right, folks, um, one last thing. Should you find dead mice, which you probably will, what we do is we collect them, put them in plastic bags. We have a plastic bag that's in a plastic bag and we put them in the freezer until we have our next bonfire. And then we burn any dead poisoned mice. I hate poison stuff, but they're so destructive. They end up coming in the house. You can't get rid of them. They eat stuff. They start, you know, you won't hate them until they start eating your wiring on your new F-150. So anyway, that's the plan. Just one bite. Tomcat bait chunks, app, or uh, apple or peanut butter flavored. The peanut butter flavored seems to be favored by the folks. Put them around your shop. And you will have some happy quail. These guys are going into the flight pen tomorrow. All right. Sorry for the length of this. Over and out. Stay free. 
Join the U.S. Quail Cooperative. Let's help other people learn how to grow. Everybody needs to get more quail. Get ready for what's coming. Over and out. Stay free.